What is up? Welcome back to HT with Dave. Today is my six month update on my progress from my 3200 graph FUE DHI procedure with Dr. Chinnick. So I'm super pumped. I got my hair cut yesterday. We're gonna go over all the areas that have filled in even since the last month. And heck, six months, I'm only halfway there, right? So uh, we're gonna touch on that. I also want to touch on a question I've seen in the forums on my channel as well, on what are the things that you can do uh, to help your hair? I mean, your daily routines. And I've got some stuff here today. We'll go over what I use. It might not be what you use, but at least some ideas of stuff that I do that can help maintain my hair growing healthy and strong. So with that, cue the intro. All right, so I'm just gonna jump right into the uh, the hair progress because I know that's what most of you guys are here for. Um, so uh, stay tuned at the end, we'll go over some of the things that I do on my daily routine. But for now, uh, I'll give you a far away look so you can kind of see with a natural light um, just how full it is. Um, and then I'll get up close so you can really see all the details and I'll just spin around real quick. So it's, it's been really awesome these past month or so. My friends, my wife, my neighbors, just all really noticing uh, what a change it's been. Um, so here we go. I'll start with the hairline and I'm actually really happy with my hairline. So when we go up close, get a little focus, come on camera. Um, you can see that I actually have a combination of my original procedure and my secondary procedure with this hairline. And what I mean is Dr. Hubner with my FUT, um, he did more of a jagged uh, approach. So I had some smaller random ones kind of put up front. So if I get really close, you can see that they're not all in a single file line. Okay, and then with my FUE procedure, Dr. Chinnick, um, Boy, the density is just incredible with that DHI and that Choi pen that they use, but um, there was more of a straight line. So you can kind of see some of the jagged ones I had peered through, um, but the uh, the little widow's peak, this little point was something that Dr. Chinnick added. So just really quick, if you are considering getting a hair transplant, oftentimes a surgeon will ask for a picture of your hairline, like before you started losing hair and you can show him a picture from high school or whatever. Uh, and for me, um, he, he just added that little point. I think it's nice. It just kind of gives a little bit of a accent, you know, on the forehead, so to speak. Um, so it's not just straight across, but I'm really happy with all the singles that I have. Uh, as far as the hairline goes, what makes it look natural? One, you wanna have a lot of single, hair follicles, um, when they take them in the back, there's a lot of multiple ones, there's a lot of single ones, and they have to make sure they're using singles only for that front uh, area, for it, for it to look natural. Otherwise, you start looking like a, a doll. Um, so anyways, uh, the front is looking really good. The hair is starting to lighten up already. And you know, it's got a natural kind of a curl, just like I normally would have. Um, so that's the front. Here's the left side, or excuse me, the, yeah, it is the left side. I get switched around the camera. There's the temple. You can see this was where my old hairline was before they really worked on these temples. So um, it's not perfect. The hair's a little darker, and so it looks maybe slightly noticeable when you get up close, of course, with the cameras on it. And there was that little I talked about last time, just a little area that they didn't go back far enough. So um, not a big deal, not a big deal. And after my haircut, probably a week or so from now, it'll be even harder to tell that it's not there. It just starts to kind of grow over. So it's really only right after that haircut. Um, go, going over to the right side, uh, this temple grew in really, really thick. And unfortunately, uh, this area right here on my sideburn, upper sideburn, um, it's like a, a ball patch I didn't even know I had. Um, <laughs> so they, they, they went all the way down, stopped right there. They should have gone a little lower, I think. But um, the solution to this all is um, when I go in to get the SMP scalp micropigmentation to cover and conceal my FUT linear scar, I'm just going to have them touch up a couple spots right there and right here and, and maybe even on the crown a little bit. I'll go ahead and show you the crown up close. 
And you can clearly see that um, the light kind of shines through. It's not as thick up there on the crown. It's not too much of an issue. I'm a tall guy. Um, and so if I were to go out, I want it to look great. I could just put those topical fibers on top. I hated using them in the front and I'll never have to ever again. Uh, but on the on the top, it's not really a big deal because I'm not styling <laughs> the area back there. But it was just like getting a handful of that stuff every time you tried to do anything with it. Um, so anyways, that's the update. I've noticed between four or five months and six months that, uh, you know, especially right after the haircut, the hairs are being more, they're more consistent. Like I had different length hairs before this haircut. And now it, most of the hairs seem to be all the same length, like all the follicles now, it seems they've already all started to grow. Um, so at this point, uh, I've got a few months left of this. It's just going to be thicker hair. It's not going to be adding anymore. Just looking at it, um, the hairs have all really grown in now. It just needs to thicken up a little bit more, I guess. Um, really happy with my progress so far. So anyways, uh, that's that's the six month update. Thanks for uh, sticking with me through that. Also, I just want to share with you some of the items that I use on my daily routine. So here we go. Okay, so first and foremost, finasteride. Um, and there isn't anything more discussed on the forums than this little pill. Um, I take it once a day. It's one milligram. Now, some people who report side effects, they'll sometimes cut down to half a milligram. They'll cut this little guy in half. Uh, but if you can see here, Costco, if you're in the United States, this is, this is where to go to get finasteride. Uh, or Propecia, however you want to call it. Um, it's $13 for a 90-day prescription, and that is cheap. So I've been taking finasteride every single day for over four years now. Um, I don't claim to have any side effects. Um, uh, I think the big ones are a decrease in sex drive. It is uh, blocking uh, DHT, a testosterone. So that can be linked with sex drive. It can be linked with depression in men. So just know that before you go into it, but don't, I would say, don't freak out. Um, the best thing you could do is just give it a try and and take note after a week. Um, for many people, I've note that they have no side effects. So just don't be too afraid of it. It is an absolute essential for me to stop hair loss in the future. That's the not gonna lose any more. This is what I have, I'm gonna at least keep this. If I don't regrow anymore, this is at least what I'll have. The other one too is this little gummy. These are actually, my wife got these things and she swears by them, but it's a, it's a biotin, uh, it's a vitamin B6 that is for hair, skin, and nails, which you know it seems kind of generic, but it really helps just regrow when you're taking a vitamin orally, of course, it's, it's, it's from the inside out, so to speak. Shampoos are outside in, and there's studies that really show that um, vitamins and supplements and those things really can help a lot with hair growth and nail growth. I don't really care about my nails, all right? But uh, the hair is important. So um, I take those every day if I remember to. Um, and again, those are like, buy them in bulk, get them at Costco or Sam's Club or wherever you can get a large container of this, probably online somewhere too. Um, the other one too is hair uh, sh shampoos. Now I am not an expert here and I don't think really that exists because there's a lot of claims of, well, really all kinds of ingredients being these hair loss remedies and these. So just take it with a grain of salt. The FDA has not really approved these studies. Um, I can tell you with Dr. Chinnick, this is the shampoo that you get if you go and have a surgery with him. And the uh, ingredients list is literally this long. And it is so many leaf and seed and flower extracts. Uh, I'm convinced they chopped down a garden just to make this, but it smells good. Uh, among though, they do have biotin and caffeine. Um, and, and, and you know, when you look at that, caffeine kind of just stimulates uh, the blood circulation, which can then bring oxygen to your follicles. Uh, again, I'm not an expert in any of this, but I can tell you that caffeine, biotin, niacin, saw palmetto, um, I'm probably forgetting a couple off the top of my head, but those are the ones you see quite often in shampoos that, you know, claim to be hair restore, uh, restoring uh, shampoos. This one here is what I use, and I've been using it now for three years. It's a, it's by a company, Hergenics, and it's called Pronexa. 
Um, and again, it has a lot of the, the same things that you see in many of the other shampoos. It's about $30 a bottle. If you buy two of them at the same time, you can save a little bit. But um, aloe vera, biotin, a couple different biotin things, uh, salt palmetto. So anyways, uh, that is my routine, the finasteride, the uh, biotin gummies, and then the uh, shampoo, and that's, that's it. You know, those are pretty easy to just know that the FDA really hasn't backed <laughs> this stuff. And one more thing, um, these shampoo companies, they change their ingredients from time to time, and I learned that the hard way, but uh, I used to buy the stuff at Great Clips, that uh, Nioxin, I think it was, and come to find out after a couple years, they ended up moving their production center down to Mexico, and they changed their ingredients list. And so suddenly now, the, the the really important ones were missing from there. And that happened to me again on another brand. So just know that they can update their, their ingredients list at any point. So if you're used to buying something over and over, take a quick look and just verify, just see if it's the same stuff you were buying uh, before. So uh, with that being said, thanks for sticking with me. Um, I'm excited to see the rest of your guys' progress. I wanna hear your stories. Feel free to leave me a, a quick message or uh, you know, just reach out, I like to help. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this uh, channel and um, I will see you around on my seventh month update.